Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call this meeting to order. <laughs> Pursuant to the Texan Open Meeting Act, this is a regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court of Hood County, Texas. Today is Tuesday, November the 26th, 2019. It is 9 a.m. We are in the Century Jewelry Room of the Hood County Justice Center at 1200 West Pearl Street here in Granbury, Texas, 76048. So I've called and today it's my great pleasure to introduce the minister or pastor who is going to give us the invocation. The reason I really do like this guy is that he is the pastor of my church, but I see a lot of people out there, so he's the pastor of our church. But he's an upstanding gentleman, and he's really with the Lord, and he gives great sermons every Sunday, and does a lot for the community and once again I want to thank Dr. Bill Miller for arranging this and I think we've had ministers and pastors from churches all over Hood County come up here and give the invocation. So it is my great pleasure here today to welcome Pastor Dan Jones to come up here and give us the invocation for today. Thank you Ron. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you would be with us this morning. Lord, we ask especially that, that you would give wisdom and insight, uh, the direction that you would guide us. Pray for these men as they lead our county, Lord. We, we're so thankful for the county that we have and for the town that we live in. And, and Lord, we know that you're here. And it's obvious in, in the way that, that this body operates and the decisions that are made. And we just ask that you would bless as we go forward. Not that you would bless what we want to do, Lord, but that you would guide us to do things the way you want so that you could bless. So I ask for, for that wisdom to prevail here uh, today and in the many days to come and that you would just watch over all that we do and that what we do and say today would be pleasing to you as we take care of the business that you've given us to attend to. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to this great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. you please join me in the Texas Pledge? Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now comes my favorite part of a commissioner's court, and that is to honor the employees of Hood County that have worked here steadily and dutifully and happily. <laughs> I spoke with one of the recipients today, and she said that she's just so happy to come to work here every day, and I said, that's exactly what we like. So. I guess the first one is Sean McGuire, who is. He was working this morning up at dispatch. We're shorthanded up there because people are off for a training conference. So okay. I'll get that certificate to him. Okay, good deal. Thank you, Sheriff. Next is Elva Garcia, five years. I happen to know this lady, and she does a good job, Jay. She does a very good job. Very good job, and we all like her very much, and don't anybody here think y'all going to take her either. The next recipient is Linda Mallon, 10 years. We will honor her in December. Oh, in December. Okay, good. All right. Uh, here's the next one. I don't know if we can all get behind this or not, but uh, there's a lady, newcomer here in the county named Glenda Mockby. Do you all know who she is? She's the person that keeps this commissioner court all straight. So we all want to take a picture with her. 15 years on the job, happily. Thank you, your hat, James. 
Yes. We'll prop her up to a stick pro end. Okay, that brings us down to Vivian Sturdivant. 30 years. 30 years? Gosh, I was just in the sixth grade, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a good thing. Vivian is absolutely essential to my office. Uh, I love coming to work with her every day. We could not run the office without her, and I look forward to having her around for another 30 years. <laughs> Okay, thank all of y'all for all your hard work and dedication to the Hood County, Texas government. The next item I'd like to bring out is that if anybody here would like to speak today, the Sheriff Deeds has public participation forms, so anything that's on the agenda, you can fill out the form and you will be allowed to speak on it. The Sheriff has the forms and uh, you will be allocated a maximum of five minutes. So that brings us down to the consent agenda. Does any of the commissioners have anything they wish to pull off the consent agenda, sir? No. Okay, no one wishes to pull anything off. Do I hear a motion? So move. Motion's been made by Commissioner White to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second by Commissioner Cotton, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay, next item, purchasing. Consider to renew RFP 2016-014 bottled water service contract for ready refresh. Is that you, Ms. Nelda? It is, but it's on the I think it's on the Oh, that's on the consent. Eight. Just so, Clint, how could I slight you in that fashion? <laughs> uh, first of all, road ops, I've talked to Mr. Lenny, no road ops today. Okay, you're excused then. Okay, all right. Clint morning. Head. Morning, you Judge. Morning, Commissioners. Set the public hearing, right? Yes. The first item we have today is an application has been accepted for a replat of Oak Country Estates, track 1R and 2R and precinct 2. Staff recommends setting the public hearing for December 26, 2019, Commissioner's Court. Judge, I'll make a motion that we uh, set a public hearing uh, for the replat of Oak Country Estates, tracks 1R and 2R uh, for December the 26th. Okay. Motion's been made by Commissioner Cotton to set a public hearing for Oak Trail, Oak Country Estates, tracks I, 1R and 2R in Precinct 2. Do I hear a second? Second. 
Second by Commissioner Deaver. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. The second item we have today is a, re a replat of lots 8R and 9R, block 6 of Hideaway Bay Estates. It is the replatting of lots 8 and 9, block 6 of Hideaway Bay, creating a 0 0.303 thousandths of an acre track called lot 8R and a 0 0.368 thousandths of an acre track called 9R. The property is located in the Water Quality District in Precinct 4 and is served by public water and will be served by on-site sewage facility. Okay, at this time we're going to recess into a public hearing then to discuss and consider for approval the following replat, Hideaway Bay Estates, lots 8R and 9R, Block 6 and Precinct 4. Have any discussion? Do you recommend this? Staff has reviewed this replat and recommends approval of the replat. Lots 8R and 9R, Block 6, Hideaway Bay Estates as presented. Okay, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the Hideaway Bay Estates replat, lots 8R and 9R, Block 6, as stated by Mr. Head. Did we, uh, did we close the public? We need to close the hearing. Yeah. Have we it, closed it? No, but I will right now. Okay, I want to close the public hearing, but Dave Eagle has didn't hear me, but he has made the motion. So everybody, you got the motion. Katie, so Dave Eagle has made a motion to approve the Hideaway Bay Estates lots 8R and 9R block 6. Do I hear a second? Second by Commissioner Deaver. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Head. Okay, financial. Good morning, Good morning, morning Miss Kidd. I'm going to let you read that whole thing, Judge. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You ready? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. <laughs> Expenditures for the November 26, 2019 Commissioner's Court are $462,824.71. The Auditor's Office has reviewed all these invoices and recommends payment. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Yeah, Judge, I'll make the motion to pay the expenditures for November 26, 2019 Commissioner's Court of $462,824.71. I'll second. Okay, motion been made by Commissioner White to approve for payment the $462,824.71 for November 26, uh, November the 7th, 2019 through November the 20th. 2019, second by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Next item, Ms. Kidd. And we did this backwards, so let's <laughs> go here. Were there any questions on invoices over $10,000? No. This 154000 that's to uh, Garland. Yes, sir. Is that, the final, is, is that the final payment to them? No, sir. Okay. Any other discussion concerning the financial reports received by the and reviewed by the audit department for the period of November 1st, 2019 through 20, November 15th, 2019? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Motion been made by Commissioner White to approve and take appropriate action for payment of these invoices from November 1st, 2019 through November 15, 2019. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Eager. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Under miscellaneous, what we're going to do is that... Wait, we have one more judge. Um, Item number two, the monthly reports. Did you? I thought he was the... You yeah, did the monthly reports? Did that. I'm, a, I'm a day behind. Yes, we did. We voted on the first one for four Thank seconds, you. Then we voted on that one. Uh, we went up, we went down. Thank you, Judge. Eggnog is for the evening, <laughs> Miss Kidd. And I didn't bring enough for everybody, so I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. All right. That brings us down to miscellaneous, and that's with sadness uh, here today that uh, we have Ken Hackett here, and his mother has passed away, and her funeral is this afternoon, and we please accept all of our condolences, Mr. Hackett, but we're going to move up item eight, which is to consider and take appropriate action to close the square parking during Christmas parade on November the 29th. And so Mr. Hackett is in charge of the merchants associations around there. So he's going to come up here and speak on item number eight, which we're taking out of order here to accommodate you. Uh, good morning, uh, commissioners, and thank you, Judge, for doing this. Um, our interest on this item is strictly to get clarification on the timing, and so we can convey that to our merchants. So we do a, agree with the closing of the square during the Christmas parade. We just need to know what to expect so we can convey that to all of our member merchants. Okay. I spoke to James Dickens yesterday afternoon, and he's in charge of when the parade starts and when it ends. And he told me that if we could get a sign-up so that everybody knows that the square parking could be opened until 515. But we need to make sure that all the cars then are out by 515. So I'm suggesting that we have a sign up there on both entrances down there that says that all cars must be removed from the parking lot by 515 due to safety for the children that will be running back and forth. So if we put safety of the children, I think that our citizens will respect that and will definitely get the cars out. And then Mr. Dickens says that the merchants are keeping their stores and restaurants and stuff open that night and that we have opened the parking lot again by 8.15. He says that would give plenty of time for everything and then a lot of the restaurants and stores are going to stay open till 10 or maybe even later than that. So would that accommodate everybody? That is, that is excellent for our part. Uh, what, 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 what's wrong with 8.15? This is Diane Hedges. Uh, I'm one of the businesses downtown. We've never closed the square for parking during the parade, ever. The parking has been open all day. By, just by default, when the parade starts, you can't move in and out of the parking lot anyway because the roads are blocked. But if you tell people they can't park there, that will directly affect my business, every restaurant, the opera house, all of those people will have people coming and going and parking. Most of those people will have parked and stayed there for a while. But at that point, we've just never closed the parking part. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we would if we had a festival in there. Because So all the merchants that I've talked to do not want this, the parking closed. The streets get closed. By the, uh, by the police department so that the parade can go around, but that will directly affect that, and there's supposed to be rain. So if there's rain and the parking is closed, people are just not going to bother to come downtown. If they well, have here's to. The That's my personal. Okay, here's the balancing act, too. We, of course, want all the merchants to do well. The courthouse is decorated, the city is decorated, the corners of it, it looks beautifully, and hopefully it draws a lot of people from surrounding counties and people into it. We really want the business and the business to help the merchants. But Constable Jividen spoke at our last commissioner's court meeting and she reported that as that when that parade is over that these young children are just running through the square and that she saw two children almost get run over. And that's why she came and brought it to the attention of the court. None of us realize that that Friday after that was Black Friday. And a lot of people, Mr. Hackett, Mr. Dickens, and everybody says, you know, we can't do that to the merchants. And so we've all been talking and we want to accommodate everybody. It's not our intention to restrict y'all at all. The only thing is, is that if one child got hurt in that parking lot during that time, 
I mean, that is just something that we would feel horrible about. And, and we think she it's was, because of Santa's house? Is that the concern? Well, we got both. We got the Santa Claus house that's mm -hmm. there, and then we got Mr. and Mrs. Claus down in the gazebo. Right. So we got two deals, and those kids, we've traded and put the Santa Claus house on the courthouse green so they wouldn't, and it's facing towards the courthouse, so when young kids get out, you know, they get all excited. We didn't want them facing and running out towards the street. But the only, the only concern that we have up here is just the safety of young children. That, that's it. I know you want to say something, but please. Sylvia Hickey, and I've been in charge of the inside part of the parade for some 15 years with the passing out of the candles. And there are people that come the day before on Thanksgiving and put their vehicles there. And they come and they put their chairs out. If you decide that you're gonna close it, those people are gonna have to come get their stuff and get out. And that's gonna be mayhem. The second part is, you know, my car is gonna be in there because of where the candles are that we give the volunteers that pass them out. The next part is that there needs to be some direction. I absolutely 100% agree, but where that needs to be is we need an officer on the entrance on Crockett and on the entrance on Houston because once that's full, the people that are just going around trying to get a spot in there and it is packed, there's no reason for them to come in. And so that would be what would be helpful is that they are not allowed to come in after, say, 5.15, 5 o'clock. But those that are already there and parked from either shopping or have you ever seen the 4th of July parade and it's all up the street and they put those pickups back in there and the, the chairs and stuff out on July the 3rd? It's the same thing. And so to change that for people that have done it for years would be, that I don't know what they would, they, they wouldn't follow it is what I'm afraid. And the children, if there were officers there, those children, and I don't want to, maybe I shouldn't say this, I'll tell you another time. <laughs> but um, there are reasons that those children are, are being, running around is their parents aren't taking care of them. Because they're what? Their parents aren't taking care of them is what we see. And so if there was an officer or two there, that might be very helpful to that situation. Thank you. Okay. Could we get, uh, we've got a couple of constables back there. Could we get some comment from one of them about the issue? It was brought up from one of the constables. I don't see Catherine here, but. You know, Kathy Chivitan is not here, but I do see two upstanding constables <laughs> here. Uh, Delton and Chad. Would y'all come up here and see if there's anything? Uh, Lynn McDonald's not doing much, is he? So. <laughs> Yeah, he's one point Oh, he, he's got, do y'all have any suggestions? I know both of y'all are concerned with safety and around. You the know, for years it, it's been, as, as they've said, you know, we've never closed the parking lot. Uh, there is concern about the kids. We are, as, as Granbury, Hood County, we're growing. And, and the merchants know, and we all know, we got more and more people coming in. So if anything, uh, if you don't close the parking lot, uh, aside from having a bunch of us out there, uh, the other suggestion is you close it once it's full and once you're in, you're not moving until that time frame. I mean, those are things to look at that way uh, to make sure uh, even after maybe 8.30, I mean, depending upon uh, the traffic. Well, I think the main concern was after the parade's over, then the kids are going to the Santa house and then you've got cars trying to get out. I think that was kind And then we still have a line of people, and, and we've seen people even lined up to Santa's house till 10 o'clock at yes. night. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we have so many people so coming down was, there to the square. Incoming, it was more <coughs> and that's when they're inside, they're locked in, and you're not getting out till 8.30. Right. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that's totally up to however the, the court wants to decide uh, to do that. But we've always, for years, had issues with this, with the kids and so many people down on the square because everybody wants to come see Santa. Would it cost the county anything to have some constables out there that were? Uh, if, 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 if I don't if, have if, more, if Morris isn't working the hospital this weekend, my reserve and, and, and possibly uh, Carpenter. I know Carpenter is supposed to be out of town 
uh, to come help us uh, out there. So we'll see how we can play some of that to get some of the staff to come in. Do you, do you think that what should happen here is that also that between the time, I guess, from the time that the parade, no, nobody has a problem with keeping the parking lot open till 5.30, okay? So we got that past that. And then between 5.30 and like 8.15 is that no cars can come in and none leave. Yeah, that's what I was going to propose, that we create some new signs that egress and degress will be stopped during those hours. And that way the people who are in, they'll know that they're trapped, we'll have the barricades out. And uh, if the constables could support that, then I think we'll solve this problem real quick. Okay. So that just is, we'd just stop all the movement of cars moving inside the county square parking lot. That, that'd be fine. Just knowing that even helps y'all out. That means y'all got a, y'all got a captured audience. So you might as well go shop and eat some more or go do it. So maybe so that's. Speak. Let's hope we don't capture them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Do I hear a motion in that regard? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that from 5.30 to 8.30, we completely close down the square inside parking. Lots. Can't get out, you can't get in. And we'll, we'll put some signs up to affect that. Yeah, and awesome. you'll put in there, and this is for the children's safety <laughs> coming out of Santa's house and seeing Mr. and Mrs. Santa. Very good. Okay. 5.30, all right. Uh, someone said 5.15 earlier. Is 5.30 well, good? Well, he says by 5, so the parade starts at 6. So right. probably it needs to shut it. Can you amend your motion from 5 to 8.15? There'll be no movement. Nobody gets in, nobody gets out. Is that okay. yes. agreeable? Yes. Yes. So from 5.15? No, 5 to 8.15. Yes. 5 p.m. Get there in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> 445. <laughs> <laughs> 5 to 815 is what James Dickens told me that would really work that everybody. So just close the park. No cars moving no inside internet. the parking lot between 5 p.m. and 815. All right. I okay. Take care of that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so anybody to second? I'll oh, second that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go ahead. Oh, second by uh, Commissioner Deaver. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, Jeff. Thank you all of thank all of y'all. So we got a solution. Thank you. Okay. Now back to the regular miscellaneous schedule as item number one, discuss and take appropriate action to approve amended salary position for 2020. These positions and corresponding salaries will be set for the remainder of the fiscal year 2020. Individual salaries will not be increased unless an employee is moving to an existing open position. Yeah, Judge, I brought this before the court for some discussion and clarification. Uh, back in September 10th of the Commissioner's Court, we approved a uh, position salary mat mat matrix and then last court, we had to ask Becky to come back with a uh, amended uh, uh, position salary mat matrix. You know, it's my belief. It's my belief that the uh, county needs a firm, consistent, and uh, st structured salary. You know, I I think we need to adopt a structure and stick with it. Uh, you know, at, at least until we can get. You know, we're, we got a study being done. I think, Melissa, we're supposed to open up the bids uh, yeah. pretty soon. And, you know, uh, I'm all for promotions and raises and all that. Uh, but I think every good, every good business has a stra salary structure. You know, uh, in the 1920 budget, we have budgeted over $19 million for salaries. You know, uh, it's just uh, in... That is $1.4 million over what we over the previous year, you know. And if you think about it even more, that's two to two and a half cents on the tax tax rate. I just was wanted to bring this forward and get some discussion from the other court members and see what their opinions are. Um, and it's just I think the court has done an admirable job in the last 
uh, year or two or a couple of uh, courts in trying to be more competitive with the salaries that are comparable with other counties. You know, we've increased our uh, retirement from 200% match to 250 match, you know. Uh, it's just, you know, and we've given raises from 6%, 8%, some of them are greater, you know, depending on uh, what, they, what they were being paid. We've tried to adjust everything. Uh, you know, I just think I would like to hear some comments from the other court members on this subject. Okay. Any discussion on this? Steve? Judge, I agree with Commissioner White. Uh, I've been on the court the longest and seen some of the chairs being moved around here and there, and this will kind of put a lock on on some of the stuff that's. And I, I, I get it. I mean, every every boss wants to get try to get their employee more money, but we need to put a a stop to this and go by the salary matrix and 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 I I, I agree with what Commissioner White is doing, and uh, I, I think it needs to be done. The exception is, is that if there's an opening position that an employee is moving into, that is already in the salary matrix. And so right. they would just move into the salary matrix. It's not like just having an ad hoc increase in some position. You have to move into a position. Okay. Anybody have anything else they want to say? Well, I was just curious as to what the status is on the uh, uh, salary survey. Do we have any idea, Becky? Yes. The proposals are due today at 2 p.m. and they'll be open today at 2. So far, we've received one. So we received a proposal to do the survey. Yes, sir. One. Yes, sir. And today's the cutoff time. That's correct. And what's the estimate of how long that will take? We have asked that they try to have the survey done in approximately four to five months. So we'll have it before the next budget. That is uh, our goal, yes. You know, I know I'd like to see the budget start probably in May or, yes. you know, Certainly a little bit earlier. Certainly we'd like to be done with the survey by end of April, mid end of So do I, knowing that that salary study is coming up for every position, it's going to be a very in-depth study, and knowing what we say here, that it doesn't prevent anybody from moving up as long as there's a position that's open in that department. You can move up in that position, and that's already an existing salary for that. But you take that salary at, at that position. So if you're moving up and the person that had that position prior doesn't have as many years with the county, there still will not be an increase. You just move into that position and draw that salary that is vacant. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I hear a motion in that regard? Judge, I'll make a motion to accept the 2020 position salary matrix. All positions will be filled at the salary coinciding with each position. I'll sec second that, Judge. Okay, second. Our right, motion has been made by Commissioner White regarding that the individual salaries will not be increased unless an employee is moving to an existing opening position at the salaries be set as we did on. September the 10th of 2019, second by Commissioner Deaver. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Commissioner White and, and Becky. Okay, item number two, discuss new procedure for redistributing interest earned from First Financial Bank. Good morning. Good morning, Leanne. I feel like I'm too close, but not close enough. Um, every month we receive interest earned from the bank. And you see that on the interest earned statement or report that you get every month. Um, I had the bank come to me in October and they have not been charging us 
their fees for the last two years. So with that being said, they started charging us their bank fees, which is in our contract with purchasing, they started charging in October. I got the first deduction from the bank with the bank fees, which was about $7,600. And for one month? Seven, for the month, $7,600. Well, $7,594.98. So with that being said, you know, of course I got a detailed on what everything was being charged and I'm going through it line by line. What can we do without, you know, asking all these questions to the vice president, you know, all along they are supposed to be charging us this, which is fine, but this is the first time for me. So I'm gonna nitpick it. So we've nitpicked enough to where our $7,500 a month will now be $500. $500? $500. So she called me, I didn't even tell Becky that, but she, the president <laughs> just called me the other day and she said, you know, this is too much for a public entity to be paying $7,500. We're talking about every remote deposit that we do, we're getting charged a fee. Um, just to have our remote deposit machine, it, it's a monthly fee. You've got fees if, you know, they're cash and checks that are not from our bank. So all those little fees add up, and it's a lot. We have 48 bank accounts. So um, anyways, with that being said, typically we will take our interest earned, which in September was 13000 uh, $13, cents. That's September's earned interest from the bank only. So we'll take that interest earned and we distribute it through the county. So there's GL accounts like our fund 10. Huh? I have an idea. Wait, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> Our fund 10 typically will get majority of it, but it gets distributed through the county. So I just wanted to bring to you that we will be redistributing this interest earned differently now since we have this new fee that should have been charged the whole time. So we'll take the interest earned minus the fee, now 500, which Wow. could have been a lot worse. Um, and we will redistribute the amount, amount after the fees are done to the rest. So you'll see the interest at a certain amount, but what's redistributed will be a little bit less. And that's all I wanted to let you guys know. It's hard to explain that through paperwork, so I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. You don't ever see it. All you see is the interest there, and you don't see us redistributing it. Do you all have any so, questions? Yeah, the only, uh, yeah, just to clarify for me, you're going to redistribute it just as you've done before, but it's going to be $500 less than what you used to. So if you see the interest rate, so you're just advising us that. I'm just letting you know that a now, little bit, so we're going to take the interest the bank didn't minus try to go, our fees. Did the bank try to go back and get any previous? No, oh, no, but, they started in October, but of course when I saw the 7,500, uh, okay. was a little stressful for me. Yeah. So. Um, I'm just glad that the, the bank worked with us and is going to do that set fee no matter what goes on. I mean, that's a lot less and we have a little bit more interest to redistribute now. So, but that was all it, all it was. This is almost like no, negative interest. Hey, this is almost like negative interest where banks are going to start charging us. The bank has our money, yeah. the county's money. Yes. And they're charging us for holding our money. Yes. It's kind of like and, yes. You know, you never thought that that was ever going to happen in your lifetime, did you? And now well, you're, and, and thank goodness that. we haven't Is had the fees. Is there any financial institutions around here that would like to just hold the money? I know. Thank goodness. I mean, we do a lot of business with them every day. I mean, there's times that I'm calling them two or three times a day. There's times where, I mean, we're making all these deposits through all the other um, offices. So they do a lot for us. And so they, it's a lot of bookkeeping is what right, you're saying. Right, right. I mean, there's times that they've taken off fees if i am seen a fee and they, you know, they just take it off because I ask. So they've, they've really come through on this one, and I'm extremely excited it's not 7,600. And that's all I have. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. No. <laughs> I 
had the exact reaction you did, Commissioner Eagle. I about fell through the floor. Yes. I thought as much money as we have Not in that as bank, bad as I did. Well, we both were having meltdowns. But I have a, my, what might be an easier way to do this. We can create a line account with a budget and pay, use that, and then you don't have to worry about dispersing the interest. Everybody gets their interest. We just call it an expense because it's bank fees. I like dispersing. We just we just threw, <laughs> I like redistributing you the still interest. Redistribute. You just don't have to worry about the $500. No, and we'll take it off the top, so we won't have to do that. Okay. I just wanted to capture it separate because it's we'll an expense. We'll work it out. It's an expense. We'll work it out. And that's why I wanted to capture it separate. Uh, I got faith in both of y'all. <laughs> we'll work it out. Somebody. I can tell y'all are going to work this out. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be my way. Or the highway. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How much does, you see, you redistribute it. How much does a normal department get? What is their monthly distribution? You know, like maybe you only do it twice a year. Do it every six months. I think if you do it twice a year, if you're not doing it monthly, it's really hard to keep up with it. It's too much. Oh. <clears throat> but you've, okay. got, you've got resource officers. Uh, they get 0.05%. You've got the general fund at this time gets seventy point five three percent. It's going to depend so on it the depends balance on in the bank so, at that right. point. So it's just easier to go ahead and distribute and keep everything straight on the right. Bank. Okay. Yeah, you've got several different offices, state okay. education and donations. Thank you, since my head is spinning and I'm still getting around <laughs> here, so let's move on. Do I hear a motion There's a in this regard? I'm not oh, sure that we really sure need, we need a motion. That, you don't need a motion? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, you're just going to work out a new procedure. I'm just clarifying what is actually done. It's always been done. It just needs to be, we need to take that fee off so we're not absorbing that fee somewhere Check else. Check the fee before you do the distribution. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you for that update. Has anybody got any Tylenol out here? <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, let's go into item number three. Consider and take appropriate action regarding the ballot for the election of three members to the Hood Central Appraisal District Board of Directors. There was a form that circulated around ballot. here. I have gotten mine and handed, filled mine in and handed it to Alicia. I have it, Judge. Oh, Katie Lang has my form. I have voted for three members. If the, Can I turn mine into, who do I turn it into? I think Ms. Lang. Oh. You will collect them. Okay. So you will tally them and then give us the results, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's nothing then to do with that till we get the results from this selection. That brings us to item number four. Discuss and take appropriate action to allow the use of the gazebo for the annual Bible reading marathon on Thursday, May the 7th, 2020, from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., May 8th, 2020, through May 12th, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., and May 13th, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. I sponsored that. We have had that here, and I can see Pastor Mike McMahon here. He believes in securing that gazebo in plenty of time, but I think that has brought really worldwide attention and has resulted in people moving from as far away as Montana to Hood County because they heard that the Bible was being read from the county square. Is that right? Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay. I, I just think, I, is anybody here on this court brave enough to fight against this proposal? That's what I want to hear. I'm certainly not. So I'm, in fact, making a motion to allow the use of the gazebo for the annual Bible reading marathon on Thursday, May the 7th, 2020, from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., May 8th, 2020, through May 12th, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., and May 13th, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. I got to second that, Judge. You, second by Commissioner Deaver. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. 
Good to see both Mr. and Mrs. McCann up there, Pastor and Mrs. McCann. Good people, good project. Y'all do a lot. This is really, really good stuff here for the county. We need a little bit more of that kind of treatment around here in the gazebo. Okay, item number five, consider and take appropriate action regarding the sheriff slash fire marshal's request to purchase 80 section of five inch large diameter supply hose for the county pumper slash tankers to replace hose that is the original hose from 2001 that is now failing hose testing. The cost is $41,000 but it would be cost a whole lot more as for the fire trucks or the pumpers to be out putting out Dr. Gaither's house fire and get out there and the hose burst and the water be on the ground and none on your home, Dr. Gaither. I mean, that would be a horrible situation here. So Sheriff, tell us about this. Judge, commissioners, when it came to my attention, I believe this is truly an emergency um, because, yeah, if we can't, just like you've been saying, if we can't get the water to the to the home, to the fire, to put it out, then we got a big problem. Um, sometimes you can't get the trucks that close and hydrants are far away, um, skinny driveways, a lot of different reasons why you can't get it in there. So when it came to my attention, I asked them, um, and you asked me too about the testing, and I got a couple of the, uh, from Crescent and Indian Harbor, um, the results back from their testing, and it's all failing. Um, they every year they do a series of testing from the inch and a half diameter hose, inch and three quarter diameter hose on up to the five inch stuff, and it's all failing. Um, and so Indian Harbor has lost all their hose, uh, that five inch hose that was purchased originally in 2001. Crescent is the same same way. It just um, it's just old, it's getting brittle, it's just wearing out. So we um, need to do something and replace all that. The, what the packet I have given to you, it has, um, Daco is on top. So the cheapest price that I got was uh, $520 per section. So what I'm asking for is 80 sections total, and that'll replace all eight trucks, so 8,000 foot of this hose. Underneath there is five other quotes, so six counting this DACO one, um, and they're all considerably higher. Um, $610 a section, uh, $712.80 a section, and, and it goes, um, goes on up from there. Daco is a good, reputable company, been around a long time, and they're on buy board, and the buy board number is 524-17 for this particular item. So um, I do believe this is an emergency. We need to get this hose replaced on those trucks to make sure we can continue to serve the good citizens of Hood County and put out those fires. So I ask at this time that you approve this, this quote. Okay, any further discussion or questions of the sheriff? These are 100 foot hoses, right, Roger? Yeah, you can get them shorter, but the 100 foot, when they're, they're what lays in the top center right. section of the trucks up there, and so you can anchor it at the, the hydrant or the water source and then drive away from it and unfold. So it's better to have the longer sections. You don't want to get any longer than 100, but you can get it made in shorter sections. It just costs more. They're, so, and more. they're tested to 450 pounds? Um, I, I, four, yeah, let me. I believe 400 or 450 is the test pressure. Actually, on that. That's the proof test, it says. Yeah, actually, it goes to 200 pounds That's on the, the flow service. test for that big diameter hose. On the smaller test, it's uh, inch and a half diameter is 400 pounds, but this, this hose is uh, failing at 200 pounds pressure. You got any speculation as to why some of the other hoses are so much more expensive besides the brand and people like that? Brands, quantity, um, you know, they buy it from different places, um, so they're not buying it from, you know, cheaper places. So, um, but that when we started looking at the, the prices, and a lot of these are internet quotes too, um, they just came in a lot higher. 
Daco is a, a good, reputable place, like I said, and they're on buy board anyway, so they were the cheapest price and on buy board. Got a 10 year warranty, also, I see. 10 years warranty. That I'm not sure about. I don't That's have it on this quote. Are you recommending this? I am definitely recommending going with Daco to order this hose and get it done as soon as we can. You know, when a hose that lasts 18 years, I think you've got your money's worth. It, we've definitely got our money's worth out of this hose, yes. Is there a way to tag those for um, Is there a way to... Probably if we draw on it with a, a Sharpie or something with a... Um, because I don't think it would hold a regular... Um, the regular tag. Could, could you engrave on this That possibly would work to engrave on there. Because okay, we need, I would like when you get them to do that before they go anywhere. That way we don't have to worry about it down the line. We can do that. But will this come, uh, auditor, will this come out of fund 55 or? That's where you choose? To yeah. Pay? yeah. We have any money left out of that money that was in the fire marshal's stuff? I mean, can that, can that be used for that? I did a, a purchase order actually yesterday for, um, I can't remember the, yes, yeah, self-contained breathing apparatus. And so it was oh, okay. just under $70,000. So that was for that money that's been All back right. and forth. The whose is that's it? That's what I, what I, can we do with it? So no, I've spent that as of the other day, yesterday. So this would be a request, I guess. Um, I asked you to pull it out of fund 55. Okay. Judge, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Sheriff Fire Marshal's request to purchase 80 sections of 5 inch large diameter supply hose for the county pumper tankers to replace hoses. That is it, the original hose from 2001 that is now failing hose tests at a cost of $41,600. I mean and I guess this is a uh, DACO uh, quote. Correct. <laughs> And it will come out of Fund 55, and if possible, we'll engrave the on the uh, metal. Yeah, we'll get it tagged or engraved, whatever works the best. Um, we'll uh, make sure that happens. I'll second that. Okay, motion been made by Commissioner White to approve the request of the Sheriff Fire Marshal's request to purchase a 80 sections of the five inch diameter supply hose for the county pumper tankers to replace the hose from 2001 that is failing testing at a cost of $41,600 from Fund 55 from the manufacturer or the seller Daco, second by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Sheriff slash Fire Marshal. Thank you. Glad you caught that. Glad you caught that. Oh, they brought it to my attention, so. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's real good. Okay. Next item, authorize the county judge to sign the SAVNS savings. That's good. Maintenance grant contract. What is that? Judge Commissioners, what this is, we've had this for I don't even know what year it started, but it's a contract between the county and the state um, that we provide the information. Once a person is arrested for domestic violence, then the victim is made aware when that uh, suspect does get out of jail for whatever reason, if he bonds out. Uh, so it's a system that's been in place for a long time and works great to notify the victims um, that a person is getting out of jail. So we need to keep this going. Yeah. I don't think we need any more discussion on that, do we? It's basically commu computer equipment that interfaces with um, our system that goes into the system when they're brought in and then it's notified to the state so they can make the notifications to the, to the victim at the time when they do get out of jail for whatever reason. Judge, then I'll make the motion to authorize the county judge to sign the SAVNS maintenance grant contract. Your second. Second. A second by Commissioner Eagle. Okay, so the motion has been made by Commissioner White to authorize the 
Uh, Commissioner Cotton. Cotton. Yeah. To authorize the county judge to sign the SAVNS maintenance grant contract, second by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Item number seven authorize the county judge to sign the participant. Do you want to do the, go back to the appraisal district or the? To the what now? Proposed appraisal district. The vote for the. Um, item three. Item three. Go back to item, item three. Item yeah. three. Yes. Count the votes. Oh, you have counted the votes. <laughs> okay. We have a tie. Yes. Do you have two that have won outright? Let me. Okay, I counted up all the votes, um, and we have two winners, and then three people tied. So I need, I put the three people that tied in this cup, and we need one more winner. So I'll have you pick a winner. Okay. Would that be okay? Okay. <laughs> Very. That's, that sounds professional. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you read it. Okay. Okay, so we have three winners. Um, Van Vernon, Terry Johnson, and Bobby Mayberry. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll repeat that. Van Vernon, Terry Johnson, and Bobby Mayberry. Okay. So, I guess what we need now is to make a motion to elect the three of those to the, these three gentlemen as board members to the Hood, Hood Central Appraisal District Board of Directors. I make that motion that we nominate Van Vernon, Terry Johnson, Bobby Mayberry to serve uh, on the appraisal district board. Okay, did I hear a second? Did I hear a second? Second. Second by, motion's been made by <coughs> Commissioner Eagle that we elect Van Turner, Terry Johnson, Bobby Mayberry as the directors. Van Vernon. Van, 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 was the Van Vernon, yep. I'm sorry. Van Vernon, know him well, as um, the three members to the Hood County Central Appraisal District Board of Directors, second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. It's item number three. Okay, now that brings us to item number seven. <laughs> which is authorize the county judge to sign the participating entity service agreement for the statewide automatic, automated victim notification service. Sevens again, okay? Yes, sir. This, this is just like part two of the contract. Okay. This, this contract has a lot of moving parts and, and there will be another one. Uh, this is a pass-through grant, but I believe they have changed the way they want to handle it this year. In prior years, the state was invoiced directly. I believe that this year we will have to pay and get reimbursement unless we do some type of waiver. I'm going to work out the details with them. It really makes no difference. We can do it either way. It will not impact our budget. Good. Okay, but this is something that's really neat. Again, this is notifying the victim of when the perpetrator is being released. And the victim can also call in and find out a date if there is a parole hearing so that they could write letters if they choose to. It's all okay. about keeping the victim up to, up on what's going on in their case. Great. Do I hear a motion? So moved. A motion been made by Commissioner Deaver to authorize the county judge to sign the participating entity service agreement for the statewide automated victim notification service. Second. Second by Commissioner Cotton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you both. Thank you. Ms. Kidd and Sheriff slash Fire Marshal. <laughs> All right. Good job, Sheriff. We've got another job that we'd like for you to get, but it doesn't pay anything either for the extra job. We just, yeah, we're just going to pay for the Sheriff, but we've got the Fire Marshal, but there's another job we need to talk to you about. Anyway, that brings us 
to the last item, which is item number nine. Discuss and take appropriate action to consider the appointment of library director. May convene into executive section pursuant to section 551.074. As many of you know, we had a special session of the commissioner's court last week. And the purpose of that was to call a special meeting and we allowed citizens at that time to voice their opinion for the library director position. The commissioner's court then uh, recessed into executive session and we interviewed three applicants at that time. We initially started out with seven, uh, two got new jobs, two didn't have the required credentials that required due to Rihanna Graham resigning and moving to Seguin in her new position. And again, all of us wish you the best of luck in your new position and you're young and I'm sure that you're headed to the Library of Congress, is head library? Okay, all right. So here we're, we're going to discuss and take appropriate action to consider the appointment and um, uh, I have one person, Dr. Harold Granick, who would like to speak on this, on the appointment of the library director. I only have one participation for him. So Dr. Granick, the podium is yours, sir. Well, brevity is the soul of wisdom or something like that. So I defer to the wisdom of the uh, court to select a library director with credentials and quality uh, of our previous three library directors of my knowledge to serve well and with equity all the interest and in citizens of the uh, Hood County community. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Well, <clears throat> I think at, at this time, um, I'm assuming that uh, we have three applicants, and so we have done this in the past by assigning a number to each of the applicants or just putting their names and, and voting on the names. Do I have any suggestions from any of the commissioners? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I'm going to make a motion that we appoint Jennifer Loxton as the library director uh, to uh, be effective with what we discussed before. I think um, I think that Rihanna's last day is next week, and she's available shortly thereafter. So my motion is to appoint Jennifer Loxton as the library director. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Motion has been made by Commissioner Eagle to appoint Jennifer Loxley as library director. Second by Commissioner Cotton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Ms. Jennifer Loxley, Logsdon, Logsdon. Logsdon, L-O-G-S-D-O-N will be the new library director. Thank you all, all very, very much. This concludes the business for today.